So um, you're going to talk to us about the evolution of Dynasty Games. Um, obviously, it'd be great to sort of make sure we uh, everything works with the audio. Fortunately, we have in the background James, who is uh, the resident steel media expert on making sure audio and video work um, as much as possible within the constraints, obviously, of a system like Zoom. Um, so obviously, we'll try and make sure that we support your uh, your show on that as much as possible. But uh, enough of me. Matthias, over to yourself. Perfect. Thank you very much, Oscar, for the introduction. Um, let me just quickly start the screen share. So uh, I hope that works now. I'm also a little bit nervous about the video, but that sequence will come later. So um, I hope it, it, it will work as um, planned. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Matthias. I'm the CEO of Toplift Productions, and I'm very delighted to be able to talk to you today about the evolution of our um, Dynasty series. In fact, this is the first time I have to speak into a little tiny dot uh, on the frame of my laptop and not stand up in front of the audience and interact properly. So um, I'll see where this goes. Uh, first time uh, for, for me, um, I guess, um, for many of my co-speakers here as well. So um, in these times, um, nevertheless, I'm very glad that the opportunity is there um, to still be able to directly speak to you. So looking also at the watch, I know it's almost lunchtime and um, let's move on. Um, I would like to quickly introduce you to Toplitz Productions. Um, we are an Austrian uh, German um, publisher. The name comes from a little lake, a little beautiful lake actually, high up in the Alps. Um, it is not what you can see uh, here as my background. Um, this is actually a background uh, from one of our games uh, that I will touch on a little bit later. So we are a very small, but um, I have to say highly efficient team of uh, industry veterans and also passionate gamers. Um, our um, aim um, and main um, idea is to develop games with heart and soul. Um, you can see on the bottom half of the page a couple of titles that we have uh, released in the past, let's say, 12 months. Um, and um, I would just quickly like to point out two of them. I will speak about the Dynasty series in more detail. But for example, we have launched um, Football Tactics and Glory that not only is featured by our um, former world champion, Lothar Matthäus, but also has quite a unique and fresh approach um, to match mechanics um, in terms of a rapid turn-based um, fashion. So something very interesting to look into. And then, of course, for everybody who's really interested in the gaming industry as such, um, Mad Games Tycoon, actually a game where you can play um, being a developer and a publisher, creating the titles of your dreams and um, make big money in this um, awesome industry. Anyway, um, we also own the um, giant brand, which um, are um, titles such as the Industry Giant and Hotel Giant, which we are currently in the process of reviving. We are active along the classic whole value chain. So um, we do development, we have an own studio and we work partially exclusive, partially non-exclusive with uh, many other indie developers and studios across the world. Of course, we do the full publishing range, um, including third party publishing, publishing our own titles and so forth. We work with many marketing experts um, across the world, be it for social media, be it for classic PR campaigns, events um, and, and so forth. And also um, we um, serve our distribution. Um, we are listed with some of the larger retail stores directly, especially in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, but also have partners across the whole world um, where we can reach into the larger um, outlets more or less directly. Um, of course, we are always on the lookout for um, additional developers and, and good talent. So um, if you see some of our games, if you like them, if you like um, uh, what we are um, uh, showing you today, then please feel free to directly reach out. Um, so speaking of games with heart and soul, you know, we had, let's say, a history of um, doing classic um, simulation games. And then we decided, let's add something more to this. Yeah, let's let, add heart and soul to these games. Um, so we asked ourselves, what is needed for this? And then we thought of um, the Dynasty series, where you not only have a classic functional simulation part, but it opens up a much deeper gameplay in terms of um, social life, interaction and many things that actually have to do with the underlying, let's say, technical function, 
um, of this game, but give much more to the player um, back. So we started with one of the um, most and classic functional simulations out there, farming. Of course, there is a large part of um, farming in Farmer's Dynasty, the technical farming and everything around this. Um, but we never had the, let's say, idea uh, to exceed all the good farming simulation games that are out there in terms of technical correctness, uh, number of machineries and so forth. But we wanted to add this heart and soul to the game. So um, we started with social activities. In Farmer's Dynasty, you not only do the farming, um, the farming work, basically, and the farming tasks, but you can drive around, you can meet people, you can talk to people, you can make um, um, or you can work for them and you get rewards. You can uh, fulfill tasks, you can repair their homes or their buildings, you can uh, plow their fields and so on and you get um, rewards in terms of machinery uh, and, and other assets, and you also get social points. Now with these social points, um, the more you get, the more social actions will become available to you. You can also interchange some of those social points um, with real money and get additional equipment a little bit cheaper than you would need um, to have it if you buy it in the shops. <clears throat> Later in the game, um, as you progress with the social um, uh, topics, you can flirt, you can meet the partner of your life, you can marry. And then, and this is another opening, uh, in fact, um, your partner will support you on your farm with daily tasks such as collecting eggs from the chicken or milking the kettle and so forth. Um, you can get kids. Um, so you have a real farmer's life also included in the pure simulation. Plus, there is a lot of other stuff that is directly concerned with you as the main player. Um, you have to take care of yourself. You have to eat and you have to sleep to be rested. Otherwise, you will get kind of penalties in your daily tasks. You will be slower, um, you will be tired, and you will not be able to carry them out as good as you would if um, this wasn't the case. So um, take care of yourself, take care of your family. That's very important. Um, and there are many other activities. You can go fishing, you can befriend a dog, you can actually fly a drone and explore your vast fields and everything that you have. Um, I will show you a couple of, uh, of the uh, activities here on the next chart. Um, you can see some screenshots um, that is everything included in, uh, in this game. So, um, the idea was to basically bring a technical farming simulation game to life, to a real life and for the player to be able to experience what it is like to be a farmer. An important part is the repairing. So many times things just break, so you have to repair them. You have to renovate your buildings, your stables. You can redecorate your own, um, your own house and so forth. So there is a lot of um, activities included that round up the whole picture basically um, of a farmer and give you the opportunity to be a virtual farmer that is, let's say, as close as possible to the, to the real life. So that was the idea um, when we came up with this heart and soul part for these games. Um, in fact, some people give us the feedback that now this is kind of farming simulator meets the Sims. And this is a concept that has proven to be very successful and certainly is something that we are further pursuing. Now with um, Lumberjack's Dynasty, um, which just entered um, early access about six weeks ago, we have kept many of the good things um, of Farmer's Dynasty albeit in a completely different setting, which is now located um, high up in the mountains and woods, basically, where you are slowly taking over an old lumber mill um, from your um, aunt and uncle. Um, there again, you can see some of the uh, impressions um, from the early access stage of the game. Besides the mix of um, functional simulation and life simulation, in Lumberjack's Dynasty, we have added and are still continuing to add a third component, which in this case is a quest driven story mode. So while some of these quests enable addition functionalities or abilities um, for the players, some others are just um, purely for story purposes. So a player can 
choose whether they want to play in kind of a sandbox mode, explore the vast world, um, cut down as many trees as possible and make them uh, into uh, wooden products or whether they want to follow the storyline. Some things will just enable while following the storyline, but it is not necessary to enjoy the game um, uh, without the storyline. So this is a very important component that we added to, um, in, in contrast to Farmer's Dynasty, the, the storyline. Um, and also a second uh, thing that basically looks into this kind of evolution we are taking here is character development. So um, you have to learn certain abilities as you go along and then you can improve. And depending which abilities that is, you actually start um, being quicker in cutting down trees or you are stronger, you can carry more things or you can run faster and so forth. So there is a lot of um, um, yeah, abilities that you can basically um, play around with. As the game still is in early access, there is a roadmap of additional ideas. And we are also, of course, looking forward to feedback from our community. Um, I cannot spoil too much what's on, on the plate, but there are some uh, additional nice mechanics uh, to be expected coming up, further developing and, and uh, evolutionizing, so to say, uh, this series here. Now let's have a look into yet another um, game that is currently in our development pipeline. It's called Trucker's Dynasty Cuba Libre. So with Trucker's Dynasty Cuba Libre, what we did here is we took, um, again, a functional underlying basis, which is the trucking business in this case, but we put it into a historical setting, which is the post-revolutionary Cuba, um, so this will give the whole um, gameplay yet another spin in terms of that there will be influences, not everything may be super correct with the time back then, but there will be influences, scarce resources, a lot of um, need to improve for the player to be able to play this game. So in Cuba Libre, you are to take over a um, very old and almost abandoned truck business and you have to um, go through the history, um, go through the hard times back in the days, make your life, care for your family, and also uh, make decisions. Yeah, there will be some decisions that you will need to, uh, that you will need to take as you move along in this game, um, which is yet another component that we have added. Um, uh, so decision tree, so to say, um, or will be adding. Um, and that will influence the outcome of the game as well. So again, this is an early development stage. Um, there will be lots of um, original Cuban music. Um, there will be the atmosphere uh, uh, that will be um, for the player uh, able to, to enjoy and experience. And um, of course, there will be um, all the good parts basically of our simulation game and also with uh, addition to all the um, social uh, aspects and, and the life simulation aspects that we have here. So um, let's move on to the final title that I would like to talk about today. And um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. Here are a couple of, of, of screenshots, um, first screenshots that we have uh, uh, available. So you can already see the, the Cuban setting. You can see some of the beautiful old cars that will be incorporated in the game um, and many more to be, to be expected. The next title I want to talk about is Medieval Dynasty. And um, Medieval Dynasty is not only a evolution, it is almost a revolution of what we have done before. Because um, in Medieval Dynasty, we have switched away from the first time from the functional underlying simulation basis to a overarching life simulation. We want to um, reflect what was life in the harsh medieval times. And for this, we added a very important uh, gameplay aspect and that is survival. So medieval times were very harsh. Um, there were lots of risks lurking around every corner, dangers and so forth. So you need to be able to survive. And a medieval dynasty will start out basically alone somewhere out in the woods and you have to um, yeah, basically make your way. You have to find food, you have to hunt or you have to 
collect um, vegetables and, and, and berries. You have to farm later on. You have to craft tools. Um, you have to defend yourself. There's a lot of wild animals around um, that could attack you. Also, medieval times were times of villains. So you may be attacked even by a couple of other people, um, which are also uh, as NPCs in the open world. So the survival aspect is one of the key uh, gameplay functions that we've added um, to this. And um, it will draw a lot of attention from the player. The other one is the building from scratch. As I mentioned, you start out uh, without anything and you have to basically get around in the world and build up a village from absolutely nothing. Craft tools, collect the materials and so forth. So this is a very important part um, that needs to, be, needs to be concluded as well. The player can actually acquire new villagers and uh, in terms of NPCs um, who will also help out. They will help out doing the task a player doesn't want to do. And by speaking of tasks a player doesn't want to do, there is a um, very sophisticated skill tree. So um, remember we started in Lumberjack with a very first basic um, uh, skill development uh, system. Now we have a very sophisticated skill tree. There are lots of abilities um, that you can acquire and fine tune over the time. And so um, there is um, yeah, a, a lot that, that can be explored and uh, can be expected. Um, also, this kind of adds a real, let's say, RPG or partially RPG experience to the game. And this RPG experience will be um, also um, undermined by um, a chapter-driven story. So there will be various chapters. There will be an overarching large story. There will be various chapters um, that have winning conditions. Um, so you need to fulfill certain tasks, reach certain goals, uh, do certain things to be able to fulfill and conclude this chapter. That then will allow you to level up in certain other aspects and enter the next, the next level of the storyline. Again, uh, because people like to roam around in the open world and explore, there are a vast, uh, majority, a vast uh, number of opportunities to do so. It's a free open world. You don't directly have to follow the storyline. You can explore, you can play sandbox, you can build up the village. Um, but um, in the end, of course, it, it will uh, prove very worthwhile because you're opening up so many other um, gameplay options to follow that story and go through that. So in essence, what we're trying to do, and of course there are many other uh, fun topics and, and, and things to um, explore, we are trying to capture the real rural medieval life uh, with all its challenges and rewards. And for this to be as authentic as possible, and I will show you now a first couple of uh, screenshots um, that display that, we have switched to the Unreal 4 engine. Um, away from our proprietary engine. The other titles are made with our proprietary engine and this one here now is Unreal 4, opening up also to a new dimension of, of, of graphic possibilities. So basically um, what I would like to say is that um, each game is a unique combination of genres and gameplay elements that followed a certain, let's say, um, stepwise approach in terms of game evolution with adding new elements putting the social and the life in uh, uh, the middle of all of these, adding survival, adding quests and so forth. And um, yeah, um, I would like to um, conclude with our trailer for Medieval Dynasty. So you get the first impression um, how, this, uh, how this works. And now I do hope um, that everything really um, um, functions and that the sound works as well. Um, let me quickly move on. Let me tell you a story. So I, I hope everything plays very well. Sound. A story of survival. A story of unity. A story written day after day each and every one of your brothers and sisters. A story of family. A story which will never end as long as the dynasty continues.
So and with this, I would like to conclude. Um, of course, uh, medieval dynasty will not be the end of the journey. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, additional ideas uh, and a couple of game concepts already uh, uh, written and, and up for implementation to continue our dynasty series. So many thanks um, for your attention and um, I'm happy to take uh, any questions um, if there are. Thank you very much. That was great. And the video worked. <laughs> we had so many troubles with video. <laughs> I mean, it, it's always a bit difficult with uh, sharing on a platform like this, but to actually see it working was great. And the audio came out pretty well. Um, awesome. and, and I think, you know, it's, it just shows, you know, the, the evolution that you guys have gone through in terms of making different games, focusing on different kinds of themes, but still focusing on a simulation experience or a kind of a, an immersion experience in that, in each of the themes. I think, you know, particularly when you get up to medieval dynasty, you're now seeing, you know, visually a, a, an engaging thing where you put, you can put yourself into that context. Um, so how how much how many lessons do you think uh, other developers can take from your your journey? I mean, what what do you think would be the the one thing you'd want to share with other developers who want to kind of improve and build upon their core skill sets? Well, I personally think it is very important not to want everything at the beginning, not to take on a project that has it all, um, because then this is either likely to become very, very complex or probably fail. Um, but to take on an evolutionary approach where you first test out things, how are they being accepted by the community, how players like the game, what do they suggest to improve, and then stepwise implement the next level of gameplay elements that you would like to introduce. So if you have a huge idea, try to break it down into, let's say, individual layers and start with the first two or three layers and try them out and then stack on top as you go along in the development journey. And that makes a lot of sense to me because in some ways it shows that even with a big game like this, you're actually still doing a lot of the same things that people are doing hyper casual games, which are obviously a lot simpler are trying to do, which is to hone in on simple things to explore and to do small things at a time and then build on that over time. Uh, is that, is that a fair assessment? Yes, exactly. I mean, um, everybody who's played, let's say a farming, a classic farming simulation knows mm -hmm. there's a lot of basic grinding to do. Uh, you have to plow the fields back and forth, forth and back and so forth. So those are the, the, the basic things, but, but we see that players really like to do it and it's enjoyable. And then you add, add the things here and there um, uh, that you think could be a, a good and clever extension to that and that, that draws somebody really into the game. Uh, and what we said to ourselves is we would like, we don't want to be technically the best out there. We cannot achieve that. We know there are others out there. That, that, that's fine. But we want to be as authentic as possible and have as many real life aspects included. And so this is, this is why we do, we, we add layer by layer basically uh, uh, of those little things, um, which in itself may not be that complex, but if you have a whole array of them to do, uh, then there's al already a lot, of, uh, a lot of tasks that you need to fulfill to move on to the next levels or that you can just enjoy doing. Yeah, and, I, I, and I've lost count of how many hours I spent in No Man's Sky mining. You know, I mean, it, I mean yes. games, it, it, the, the amount of time I spent in Skyrim picking flowers. I mean, uh, there, there's something about these kind of mundane quotes mundane tasks which are inherently satisfying because they're in a context of escapism and their context of not being dependent on the outcome for any real world um specific action um i mean do you think that taps into a deep underlying psychology of a player um probably yes uh, i think i mean people uh want to enjoy some tasks they do um, and the people want to relax if they play games um, of course there are those hardcore shooters and so forth they are played for other reasons for other entertainment reasons mm -hmm. but if you want to have a casual game that is relaxing where you can enjoy maybe a good scenery or also learn about things how, how, how certain things work mm -hmm. um, this this grinding is, is is a good way to go about and then also it's always the the reward yeah the, the reward what comes once you have enough uh, enough money to buy the next good machine or once you have plowed this nice field and you see the crops growing um, and so this is something this this um, hard work reward mechanism 
that works very well in, in, in various levels and in various settings. Um, if, you, if you repair a car and then you have the shiny new car sitting there, yeah, that, that, this is great. And we have, especially with Farmer's Dynasty, but also with Lumberjack's Dynasty, now many people uh, who have several hundreds of hours, if not even uh, four, four digit hours, over a thousand hours spending into the game, explored the full map, uh, plowed every field twice or three times. Um, and this is great because they, we, we get the feedback, they really like it and they enjoy themselves in this game. Well, because it's tapping in, I think, to, to kind of an aspect of uh, psychology around optimization, uh, and that kind of um, I, I often refer to it as the hot dog economy. So, you know, the reason why you have um, eight hot dogs and six hot dog buns is because there's always an imbalance, and you're always trying to find that moment of getting that kind of I've got to do a bit of this, and I've got to do a bit of that, and I've got to keep that balance going. And I think that sustains, um, you know, the attention of the player. In, in a game like this, I mean, I, I don't know this particular release model, but a lot of them are, here's a game, it's released, and then each year we'll update it. Do you do that, or do you look for a more frequent level of kind of uh, events and promotions and activity in the game? So um, what we do is, um, as we currently with the example of Lumberjack, um, we just started the early access six weeks ago. We have a roadmap. There will be um, four major updates coming where there are new gameplay elements added. Um, and also um, we plan to um, provide additional content in the future. We would like to get the feedback of the community, what they really like. Huh? Mm. Um, and then, um, of course, there are some, some gameplay modes um, that are frequently asked for, like a co-op mode and so forth. And we think about these things, how to implement them um, and how to make it um, um, even more, um, let's say, attractive to, mm. to the gamers out there. I think okay, it's an interesting then. space. I'm biased on this because, I mean, having worked in service games for so long, you know, the stuff that we learn, even on PlayStation Home on a console, the ability to give people something regularly on a weekly basis that's small, predictable and reliable can be dramatically effective in terms of retaining and maintaining an audience. Um, but again, it's finding the right cadence for the right game and not every game is going to be the same. And, you know, I think it's just a challenge that I think every developer has is working out, A, what can we do? And B, what's right for the audience to sustain and build and scale a community? Yes, absolutely. So with, with this series, currently we are in the, in, the, in the classic mode of developing a game and then you sell the game. It's not those, let's say, rapid additional content creation uh, kind of uh, uh, setups. And also... Um, it always needs time to, to actually implement and then it may have an even bigger impact on the overall gameplay. It makes the whole setup and the whole game more complex. But we do think about those little uh, uh, bits and pieces that we can intelligently add um, to, as exactly you said, uh, to keep um, the game um, appearing attractive and, um, and being up to date and, and providing new content so that there's a constant stream of interest. Absolutely, yes. Uh, absolutely. I think that's always going to be a tough balance. Uh, and I think, unless there's any other questions, I mean, I, suppose I, I should ask you one, uh, one we couldn't answer previously, but I think would also apply to you. How, do you think you've seen a, a, um, a change in people's behavior during the COVID period, particularly because it feels to me like this is a great escape for somebody, uh, particularly those who have more time on their hands and can't get out. This seems to me a great way to actually go and have an alternative life. Um, yes, so what we could observe um, was, of course, an increase in, in gameplay activities. You could also see, if you look at, at certain statistics, um, you can see the typical curve that goes up and down over the week, and then uh, in the evenings you have more, and during the day there's nothing. That kind of completely um, was completely deranged after the, the shutdown, so mid-March. And basically, you could see that people were much more online and, and much more uh, into the games and, and, and playing actively, um, showing exactly, like you said, that the, there's nothing else to do. Um, uh, you cannot go outside. You're, you're stuck at home. And, and so this is to maybe to escape or just to enjoy and have the additional time that you usually don't have to play the games. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. And on that note, uh, I, I thank you very much for your time.